You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Monday, April 1st. In an escalation of the Middle East conflict, Israel has launched a series of strikes on Gaza following a Hamas attack on October 7th, which left at least 1,200 people dead, many civilians. Despite Israel's agreement to release around 7 to 800 Palestinian prisoners in exchange for 40 hostages, Hamas has rejected the U.S.-backed compromise demanding a complete Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. Hamas's refusal, according to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, stems from their extreme demands, including halting the war and maintaining their governance in Gaza to potentially repeat the October massacre. Netanyahu, undeterred by Hamas's rejection and international calls for a ceasefire, plans to continue Israel's military objectives and discusses the possibility of a ground operation in Rafah with the U.S., despite opposition. The conflict has resulted in over 32,000 deaths in Gaza, with Netanyahu emphasizing the necessity of eliminating Hamas's military and governance capabilities to ensure Israel's security. Al Jazeera, a Qatari state-run news organization, pulled an unverified story accusing Israeli soldiers of committing atrocities at the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza, including allegations of rape and burning families alive. Despite its initial circulation, the report was based on unsubstantiated claims from a Gazan woman, Jamila Al-Hassi. Al Jazeera faced scrutiny from the Jerusalem Post, highlighted the article's presence and subsequent removal without an official retraction initially issued. Further complicating matters, a columnist for Al Jazeera admitted the story story was fabricated but continued to accuse Israel of genocide, citing exaggerated figures to stir national sentiment. Additionally, amid Hamas's acts of terror, there have been reports of sexual violence perpetrated by the terror group drawing international condemnation, including a statement from UN women condemning Hamas's brutal attacks and sexual violence. As the 2024 presidential race heats up, former President Donald Trump and incumbent President Joe Biden are set to lead the Republican and Democratic tickets, respectively. Despite the focus on these two political titans, a range of high-profile contenders and lesser-known aspirants have thrown their hats into the ring challenging the frontrunners. Among these, some candidates, despite engaging in notable activities outside politics, have yet to be considered serious competitors in the electoral battle. This landscape underscores a diverse field aiming to capture the White House, including 15 under-the-radar candidates who, despite their varying degrees of public attention and media coverage, are determined to make their mark on the 2024 presidential election. You can read more about these 15 lesser-known candidates by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. This episode is brought to you by Patriot Mobile. Americans have had enough of supporting companies that don't share our values. Tired of compromise? Switch to Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer dependable nationwide wireless coverage, giving you the same coverage you're used to while defending biblical values. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Christian Post or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with the offer code Christian Post. You can also click that link at the top of the show notes in today's episode, patriotmobile.com slash Christian Post or call 972-PATRIOT. Tragedy struck on March 28 when a bus carrying pilgrims from Botswana to an annual Easter gathering in Moria, South Africa, veered off a bridge, killing at least 45 people. South African Transport Ministry reports the bus was en route to Zion Christian Church's largest Easter service when it plunged 50 meters into a ravine, catching fire upon impact. President Cyril Ramaphosa and other political leaders across Africa have expressed their condolences. Only one survivor, an eight-year-old girl, miraculously emerged from the catastrophe. The calamity has prompted calls for improved road safety measures and heartfelt tributes from both South African and Botswana officials, emphasizing the profound loss to the community and pledging support to the victims' families during this sorrowful time. Idaho Governor Brad Little signed House Bill 668 into law, prohibiting the use of public funds and facilities for sex change surgeries or hormonal treatments for children with gender dysphoria. Citing concerns over their long-term impacts, this decision, passed in the state's legislature with Republican support and Democratic opposition, adds Idaho to the list of 24 states implementing restrictions on gender transition procedures for minors. The law, effective from July 1st, also impacts healthcare professionals and tax deductions related to these procedures. Critics, including the ACLU of Idaho, have condemned the measure as discriminatory, vowing to continue the fight against it. 
Testimonies and opinions surrounding the bill highlight the ongoing debate over the safety and ethics of gender transition interventions for children. New Jersey is taking a proactive stand against the threat of mass shootings in houses of worship by distributing over 7,000 bleeding control kits to the state's approximately 6,400 religious centers. These kits, an initiative by the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness, include life-saving items such as tourniquets and pressure bandages aimed at improving survival rates in incidents before emergency responders arrive. NJOH SP Director Lori Doran said, quote, Our hope is that no one ever has to use these kits, emphasizing the critical minutes following a severe injury where slowing blood loss is essential. The distribution, supported by various organizations and aiming for completion within a year, reflects a broader effort to improve security and preparedness in places of worship, especially following several deadly mass shootings. This move aligns with federal initiatives, including a $375 million grant authorized by President Trump in 2020 for security enhancements for nonprofit organizations and guidance from the Department of Homeland Security to help religious institutions bolster their security measures. In a recent interview with Tucker Carlson, comedian Roseanne Barr shared insights into how her faith in God guided her through the challenges of the entertainment industry and personal hardships. Growing up in a Jewish household in Utah, Barr developed a unique relationship with God since she was three, viewing him as an omnipresent friend and confidant. She discussed her dialogues with God about human suffering, to which she felt God responded by highlighting her own capacity to affect change through her actions. Barr's conversation with Carlson also touched upon the pressures and illusions of the show business, likening it to the enslavement of the Israelites in Egypt, and emphasized the importance of breaking free to discover true autonomy. Amidst sharing her experiences and reflections, Barr also spoke on her controversial past, including the tweet about Valerie Jarrett that led to her show's cancellation, expressing regret and attributing the incident to the influence of sleeping pills. She stressed the power of personal prayer and collective spiritual effort to enact global change, hinting at her perception of a looming, apocalyptic scenario. You can read more about this interview by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Cast. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post Daily Podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Yeah.